welcome. My name is Kim Gultam and I am a certified master wellness coach and I'm so excited to be launching this new channel, Working Towards Wellness. And my very first uh, two guests um, that I have here today with me, I'm just so excited for you to have a chance to learn from. Um, but the first one that I'm going to introduce to you is Zoltan Janota, also known as Johnny. So welcome. He is a triathlon head coach, top 10 finisher in Ironman. So how cool is that? And co-founder of Health is Wealth. And then we also have Helga Ganda, workplace wellness professional and also co-founder of Health is wealth. So I am so excited to have both of you here today. And Johnny, I would love for you to uh, talk first about a, more about your background and uh, what you do and how you got started. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm very excited. As you see me sitting in my space shuttle <laughs> in the <laughs> other side of the world, uh, yeah, my name is uh, Zoltan Yamata, uh, but in the triathlon scene, as you told before, uh, everybody knows me as Johnny. Uh, I've, been, I've been in triathlon sports for almost uh, 30 years. I have quite a big experience in sport and suffering, <laughs> we, we can say that. Uh, I'm a 17 times Ironman finisher and uh, top 10 uh, triathlete uh, in, in Hungary. I won several country champion medals um, in my age group and succeeded in, in running races. And uh, just to just to prepare only for for Ironman distance, uh, so race requires um, strong dedication and um, yeah perseverance. Uh, I became committed uh, very early in my sport career, and it became. Um, triathlon became a lifestyle. It's not just a sport. It's a 24-7 job for you if you, if you are serious. Mm -hmm. And um, this, um, this thinking is, um, is very effective. And I try to teach this to, to every kid in my team. Almost, yeah, almost 60 uh, kids in there. And wow. uh, adults as, as well so we we have a strong community with uh, with, with mindset uh, as the normal normal people or the average people i have uh, uh, two university uh, degrees in in sports and uh, started triathlon coaching and, and swim teaching uh, 15 uh, years ago i was a uh, swim head coach in qatar and in in switzerland, switzerland some years ago and it was quite a valuable experience uh, because uh, I was working with uh, almost 17 different nationality. So mm. it's not the same to treat a, a Russian boy uh, or, a, or a Chinese girl. So it's very different. But if you are if you are committed, they will they will feel it, and they you, you can work uh, in the same way. Uh, currently, I, I work in Hungary in a big city close to the, the capital as a head coach of a triathlon team, as I told you. Uh, this team is called Family Tree Triathlon Team. So it's, uh, uh, it means a lot. Uh, the names come from an ID where the, the whole family is uh, training in the same place and at the same time. And of course, uh, uh, to achieve um, something more than earning medals, uh, getting some experiences, what, what can they share together after the trainings and uh, they can give it to their community at, at home. And um, yeah, beside this, uh, I'm a lecturer of uh, sport nutrition uh, courses and active member of the Hungarian uh, Army Reserve uh, System as a lieutenant. And uh, we can say that my work is uh, multifaceted and uh, I encounter uh, a wide variety of, of people, problems and uh, life uh, situations. Uh, to be successful, I must be flexible and, and very creative. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, with Helga's experience and knowledge in the field of business, we, we offer 
and uh, yeah, effective solutions in, uh, in the field of well-being. I think, uh, yeah, that's it. Well, <laughs> that's I am. Are you sure? <laughs> Yeah. There's much more, but limited time. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Absolutely impressive. And I'm uh, just so grateful to uh, have you here and to be, uh, you know, picking your brain and having you share uh, your knowledge with everyone shortly. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Helga would love to hear a little bit more about your background. Yeah, thank you very much, Kim, for the opportunity. It's really appreciated. Um, so my name is Haga Gonda, and um, as Johnny said, we are based in Hungary. And I would just actually continue with his thoughts. So we teamed up um, together to, to join our forces uh, in the field of um, uh, physical and mental well-being to support organizations and uh, individuals to get their best selves and um, our idea is coming from the fact that um, uh, we realized that uh, with uh, Johnny's uh, background, 30 years of uh, background in triathlon and um, achieving um, and finishing uh, 17 Ironman uh, competitions, he's coming with a strong background of uh, physical and mental toughness. I worked in the office of the Global Business Service Center. I was a facilities manager for there. And uh, my past 15 uh, years uh, was uh, spent in facility management. Um, I learned it from the very beginning, uh, being an assistant and coordinator and team leader. I uh, worked uh, not only in Hungary, but also in the UK and in the Netherlands. Um, I also gained um, several certifications in this Field, whatever was possible and achievable. For example, the, I have uh, uh, completed the two credentials of the International Facilities Management Association. Um, also um, in Hungary, uh, I have completed a postgraduate degree in facility management. Um, I'm also a lecturer at the Budapest University of Technology, where I'm uh, holding lectures in the field of uh, health and safety and uh, risk management for likewise um, facilities uh, professionals. And I'm actually very grateful for, for my life, for, for fate, for finding this uh, area um, for myself. So facility management and workplace services is really an area which, which I am for and like uh, very, very much. Um, I was, um, I wouldn't say lucky because I had to do a lot for that, but I'm really proud that uh, I have um, uh, received uh, some awards for my work, uh, for my commitment and for my achievements. And um, uh, before coming into the facility management role 15 years ago, for five years, I was working with uh, top executives. Uh, I was their interpreter and their translator. And I think that helps me a lot to, to see how um, strategy programs, initiatives, and, and actually um, the whole organization could work from top to bottom, from bottom to top. Um, so that was a great trigger for me to, to get into this field, to get into facility management and, and uh, workplace services and I'm very grateful that I uh, uh, met uh, Johnny and the team that in the Hasis Bass uh, um, initiative and uh, we are hoping to uh, provide uh, great uh, programs and services both for individuals and for organizations um, in the field of uh, well-being strategy programs so their employees and the individuals contacting us uh, could uh, could improve uh, their physical and mental health. Whew. Wow, I'll tell you, between the two of you, you guys are a powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a duo. And I know you have uh, even more certifications because I've met you through the Workplace uh, Wellness Center of Excellence and how amazing um, that we're able to connect across, uh, across the world this way, which I think is just so fantastic. I'm so excited. So thank you both. Uh, I really appreciate your time because I know you have a you both have a lot on your plate, so thank you so much for being here today. And so, Johnny, I would love for you to start off and share a little bit more about, you know, what is a, a triathlon lifestyle and what does that mean? What does it look like? Yeah, uh, in some way, just one thing um, came to my mind that yeah. uh, life is 
very complicated in some yes. way, and the, on the other hand, um, it's it's very simple. True. If, true. If you if we say uh, for the for the simplicity, uh, first of all, uh, life equals movement. So movement means being active, and if you are active, uh, it means you want to live. Uh, you want to gather more physical and psychical experiences and knowledge to be to be fit for life uh, to be able to respond uh, quickly and appropriately to challenges so no drama no um, yeah no not too much um, energy for for nothing and uh, secondly the ironman lifestyle uh, teaches you to to respect your body uh, improve your skills every day and know your physical and mental strength and also your, your weakness. That's, that's very important uh, because you are as strong as you are aware of your abilities. Uh, if you think that you are a robot, if you are a Terminator, uh, you will fall quickly. Uh, right. You, you believe me. And um, uh, if you can't only ask for to, to challenges, but also look for them. That is a higher state of mind and resilience as, uh, as well. Uh, yeah. Combining all of this with, uh, with our everyday routine um, uh, will be a healthier way of thinking and a higher level of well-being, uh, we can say that. And not to mention, if you organize your task to, to have enough time for sport, you will realize that how many unnecessary things you have done so far. Yeah. So, uh, it doesn't mean you must give up all your habits, but uh, you can you can live you can live a, a quality life without uh, the things before, and uh, so you are getting more effective, which is uh, really an advantage in, in the age of rush, I think. Mm. And for example, in, instead of playing with your smartphone and not letting time for for morning routine, uh, after yeah. getting up, um, ha have five stretching exercises. Uh, Quickly organize your daily schedule, make up your bed, uh, brush your teeth for, for a minimum of uh, four minutes, uh, and drink a glass of water before eating. It's just a very simple thing for, for everybody. And uh, you, can, you can exercise, you, you can train this every day. And uh, it, uh, it's a small step, but it will change uh, your, your view of, of life and uh, what is important and what's not. Uh, View from the sports side, uh, I just say, use the stairs instead of the elevator. Uh, joking in, in, in everyday life, and especially yeah. in the office, is strictly recommended because, uh, and the music as well, if, you, if you're doing a home exercise or it's allowed at your, at your workplace, uh, it's always uh, at, at hand and uh, simply great tool to, to change your mood. You don't have to wait for uh, for a physician or, or somebody else. You just plug on and go on. That, that's it's very very easy and uh, it, it helps. You, you can feel it. And um, the best uh, to, to best relieve stress, the the foundation must be cyclical endurance sports on on moderate intensity, such as swimming, cycling, jogging, uh, running, and and hiking. So it's uh, so easy uh, exercises or this kind of sports, but also try new forms of, of exercise just to widen your skills. Uh, if yeah. you if you stuck, uh, it, your your mood will, will go down. And uh, just one thing is shortly about sleeping, uh, because uh, if if you want to be active, you you have to have some rest uh, before that. So switch off your Wi-Fi and other electrical devices um, near your bed while you, while you sleep and, um, and a bit colder climate and uh, letting fresh air in the bedroom is, is also a useful uh, tip to have a more pleasant sleep. So it's a quality sleep, uh, what, you, what you need, not the time uh, spending in sleep will, uh, will affect your uh, everyday mood but the quality uh, is, is much more important I think yeah that's that's the most important things thank you for sharing that and I'm so yeah, glad I'm you so brought up sleep because that was a question I really was going to ask you with that list of everything that you said you're currently doing I wasn't sure if sleep was part of it so I'm so glad <laughs> yeah, I'm still half 
half human. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. I love it. So can you share more about, you know, what the Ironman lifestyle means to you and, and how others can embody it? Uh, you, you, you mean, um, uh, talking about exercises or, um, uh, just in, in average? Um, I'll let you decide your choice. One answer to, to challenges, you have to, you must uh, learn how to suffer in a, in a low level and just build up from, uh, from step by step because uh, our life is getting more and more lazy and sports will, will teach you to, uh, to bear the challenges and uh, step up and do what you have to do and uh, this yeah. mentality uh, it's not just uh, success, not just, yeah, uh, in sport, uh, successful, but uh, successful also in life. Uh, if your boss uh, giving you tons of paper, uh, you can say, no, I'm fed up or just change your mind in a, in a second. Okay, let, let's do it. Let's kick it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, some, sometimes it's just um, a millisecond uh, will lead you to, to the to the dark side or or the successful side uh, just to change your mind uh, it's on you and it's not uh, it's not in you or not in everybody by born uh, you you must learn it and you must practice it to be to be a master of it and uh, in triathlon even if you spend 30 years there's always every day there are some new challenges uh, ahead and you have to you have to be very um, I say patient and uh, forward thinking uh, to, to accept challenges and not just to, to rush everything that, okay, I have 17 Ironmans in my, in my packet and in, right. in my pocket and uh, I'm in, uh, undestructible. No, uh, you are weak. And if you start from this point, you, you will be very sensitive for, for new things. And I love how you brought up the, the whole layer of mindset and perspective, right? You know, it's, it's taking it this way or approaching it the, another way. It reminded me of something uh, a mentor of mine used to say, you know, somebody could be upset that they have to be, you know, on the, the 6 a.m. flight uh, <laughs> to go somewhere, or they could be grateful that they have the opportunity. So they might not enjoy waking up at 2.30 in the morning that particular day to, for the for the 6 a.m. flight, but it's the opportunity to be able to do that and taking that same mindset and approach for exercise and movement. And I love how you, uh, you shared that. That's fantastic. Thank you. And so what would you say to others when they're getting started on an exercise or movement plan? Well, as as uh, in, in everything else, uh, consult your health practitioner to know what is allowed and recommended to you. You must find some clear and uh, achievable objective to lose weight, to eliminate uh, stress, to get better posture, uh, or to run your, your first you know, 5K, or to just clear your mind, uh, or to be more effective uh, in, in your job. Everything is connected. And to de define your, your fitness level is very important that from which part uh, of life, uh, of level uh, you start. Um, beginner, intermediate, advanced, or you just restart regular training uh, after some illness uh, or after COVID, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, setting lower goals uh, means you are careful and not weak it's very important because life uh, rushing you to set the limits always high but yeah. if you don't know your corner you will fall very very soon so this is already a different mindset we can say it's an ironman mindset but uh, uh, usually you met this uh, before in, in somewhere else um, if possible go out and exercise in nature uh, we we don't live in cages, <laughs> yes. or we should not. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, running or jogging is, is the most effective all-around movement, uh, but fast walking or, or climbing stairs, uh, if you had this, uh, if you have this uh, possibility, it's also it's also perfect. Uh, 
you don't expect miracle or big things just start with the simple things and uh, uh, much pain and uh, suffering uh, are unnecessary especially during the pandemic um, raise your fitness level slowly but but surely um, progress not perfection that's is always uh, with with 30 years experience you, you you should not rush your your fitness level because uh, yeah you are not a 24/7 uh, professional sportsman you don't have a uh, big stuff uh, around you to just look for every every wish you you have uh, you, even if you are all your own uh, you can do big things and great things uh, by just step by step um, Define your, your available time and, and schedule. For beginners, just one option is a, is a minimum of uh, 15 minutes uh, per day uh, training every week. It's, it's not a big thing, but you have to start somewhere to, to reach somewhere. And the second is a, is a minimum 30 minutes uh, in every second day, or if, if you have a availability like this. It depends on what suits you. The, the best. Um, so there's not a, a all time uh, best uh, offer. Uh, give preferences to functionality, uh, use as many basic and multi joint uh, exercises. Uh, focus on, on better technique at uh, every intensity. And uh, if you're not before uh, a personal trainer, even he or she is just online. Uh, it's uh, it's just go and and, uh, and try. Uh, the first two three weeks uh, will be about uh, finding the balance between uh, work, family, sports, and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do it playfully. It just yeah. just have some fun. Life is is not a, a rigid thing as as. Uh, the same as your your health is just building up just ruin something and build a higher and, and a better fitness yeah i think this is the most important yeah no i think that's incredible and you gave so many you know nuggets there i love the you know um that starting off slow is not uh, a sign of weakness right you're making you're making progress not perfection right those different layers and, and nuggets and sometimes especially if we have been a little bit more sedentary over the last year definitely we want to start a little slower so that we don't injure ourselves. and so always a uh, you know kind of tuning in and listening to our body that's what I'm hearing from you and I think uh Oh, there's just a lot of, those were like my top nuggets that I just got, but I know there were so many juicy nuggets that you just shared. That was, uh, that was great. That was really great. Yeah. So thank you. Thank this you. Is, this is, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just want to say that this is how we, uh, our body works. It's nothing, uh, nothing special. You have, you have to just un answer and uh, understand it. Yeah, absolutely. And so what is the, the very first thing that you would recommend for someone who's uh, about to get started, let's say they're planning on getting started this afternoon, what would you, what would you recommend as the first thing to do? Yeah, technique and safety first, every time, everywhere. Um, start with the, the fresh head and uh, body because after an exhausting uh, day, uh, people just want to finish quickly uh, with the exercising uh, <laughs> to soothe their yeah. soul but yeah yeah it's possible yeah. but to soothe their, their soul but this is a bad perception uh, with a with a fresh uh, head and body you can focus better inward and get some more feedback from your body and uh, mm. of course you, you are capable of doing more because if your head is tired your body won't go much further and uh, um, yeah, commitment and patience are important, as I told you before, yeah. because your body, as your joints and nervous system, uh, just needs some time to adapt any new form of movement or or to a, to a new schedule of your life. And uh, after uh, yeah, an exhausting day, just don't start uh, training hungry as well as well. <laughs> uh, it won't be any good, uh, nor the next morning. Uh, so the, the, the simple reason can be traced back to ancient times. 
uh -huh. uh, in the state of hunger, you are less patient and uh, mm. not uh, the logic, uh, but your survival instinct uh, that drives you, your action. You, you just want to hunt and finish with, uh, yeah, with, with an animal and uh, yeah. you're not, it's, it's not a chess, chess mate. <laughs> Right. The, the small details uh, won't catch your attention and uh, on the other hand, if you don't have a minimal amount of food in your stomach or a digestion system, uh, your body will devour your, your precious muscles and uh, you can be sure you don't want that. Uh, <laughs> <and> yeah, <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> even, if you, even if you call it uh, exercise, it's, it's a negative stress and uh, that's why I recommend exercising in the morning. Mm. Uh, it's, it's much more um, time saving and it will change your whole day. It's, it's very, it became uh, uh, my habit uh, to start uh, like the swimming training very early in the morning. After that, you, you just feel that you are getting calm. That's just, yeah, the training is, is crossed. It's okay. And we can start a day. That's it. Nice. Well, thank you. I appreciate this. I, I appreciate all of your uh, wisdom and um, advice for everyone. That is fantastic. So thank you. And so Helga, tell me a little bit about your journey to getting started in a consistent exercise program. Yeah, my sports history is not <laughs> as long as uh, Johnny's one, but uh, um, some bits and pieces about that. I played volleyball for 14 years. Thanks God, you cannot see how tall I am. <laughs> Actually, very sure. <laughs> um, sorry, I could have missed it. Um, but I really like this um, uh, sport because uh, it really uh, taught me how to be a team player. Uh, I also ran six half marathons in five different countries. I'm very proud of that. And uh, recently I have started to prepare uh, for another half marathon. Um, and so therefore I started running um, again, um, just in a very step-by-step uh, -step mode because um, since I ran the six half marathons, I have two daughters now. And uh, as you can imagine, balancing the work, the life, the family and the sport. So just like Johnny mentioned it um, in his part, um, then it's just a uh, um, really a multitask uh, to do so. If I could uh, give some advice for those who would like to start or to restart um, sports activities, what I would do is I would put on my coach hat and uh, I would ask questions. And actually the questions that I'm gonna ask um, could be used both uh, when you start sports activities and you can use it uh, in your life as well to find a higher uh, motivation or achievements. So one of the questions, for example, I would ask is that um, I ask from myself and I go running. So what is my higher purpose for going out? So it is not just simply going out and, and suffering, but I have a higher purpose purpose. So for example, I want to stay healthy, but probably it sounds too general. So actually I have a more uh, specific objective for this. For example, my objective is, um, or my higher purpose is um, that I have a vision that one day all members of my family, so four of us, will be running a half marathon together. So that's, I know that it's really, really far away and it's a vision. That's great. But, but but it's something that I'm really thinking of when I go out running. Or it's not just about health, but just to be able to go out with my daughter who is cycling and I'm running next to her. So to be able to catch up with her, I need the right stamina. So that is, that is about the higher purpose. I would ask this question first. Then the other one is about the focus. So how can I uh, get into the get into a state when I'm able to focus on what I'm doing. Because if I lose track of what I'm focusing, um, then I'm just not gonna achieve what I want to do. So that's really important, not just in sports, but in life as well. Then the other two questions uh, I have, the third and the fourth one actually correlate because the questions that I would ask is that, what is actually stopping me um, to go ahead and do something? And the other part of that is that, what are the things that make me go ahead? So for example, when I, when, when I'm about to go out running, sometimes it's very difficult because it's cold outside or 
it's raining or something like that. But I actually try to think of the root cause. So I just sit down for a minute and really think about the fact that actually what is stopping me? Is it mood, weather, what, and what I can do against it? So that's one part of the that's one of the questions and the other one is that what is actually making me go ahead um so when i'm running sometimes it happens that i, I just stop and <laughs> i just feel that i don't want to go ahead and it can happen in life as well but when it happens i just stop and think and try not to worry or panic because I can actually walk and then if I'm walking, I'm still making progress. But again, I stop and start to uh, find the root cause. So what is actually making me go ahead? And then I, for example, during running, what helps me, but that's just my personal um, strategy. I look at myself and I think that I have two arms, legs, I have my lung, I can help <laughs> I'm here, the weather is nice, so what is actually stopping me? And sometimes I think that it should, it can be something mental or just a thought or something. And if it is a thought, then we can easily go ahead. So, so this is about um, what makes you uh, go ahead. And the last one, which is very, very important, um, and uh, Johnny mentioned it as well, um, for me as a facilities and workplace profession, very important, is uh, your personal safety. So before you start doing any sports, really stop for a minute and think about what could go wrong. Um, and I'm not saying that you do a professional risk assessment. <laughs> Yourself. If you, professionals, professionals have then then just go ahead and ask. don't be afraid to ask for advice but really stop for a moment and think about what is the best way to to stay safe because that's very important not just at sports but in general in life as well Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing um, about your personal strategies for running as well. That's fantastic. And I know something you had mentioned before was that you also like to listen to motivational music while you're getting dressed to kind of and get some warm up uh, stretching exercises, which goes back to what you're just saying about personal safety, right? Because you don't want to just pop out there and you're like, okay, <laughs> let's start, <laughs> right? Got to do the warm up exercises and, uh, and some stretching. So I think that's fantastic. I'd love for you to share with everyone, you know, what are your personal discoveries as a result of running? Um, my personal discovery is that during running, um, I think the best thoughts are coming. So very recently I have started the strategy is that I'm not listening to music during running, but I'm actually listening to music before running. So while I'm doing the running gap exercises, because whatever I was listening to, I'm going to hear <laughs> while I'm running. <laughs> um, but actually this is, um, this is a, this strategy actually helps me to, to focus on myself, on my technique, on my thoughts, um, being able to listen to my inner thoughts. And it very often happens that I get home and I have the best ideas for, for anything. So it could be work, life or anything. And I actually have a journal, it's with me. Um, oh, nice. I, I actually make a note of everything. So when I get back from running, any thoughts, any ideas I had, I make a note of that and that's great. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. That's really exciting. And I know you can have your, I know for me, if I'm exercising or, or have movement, I always get those aha moments. So it's wonderful that you have your, your journal and you're actually being mindful to take time to just kind of unload and, and, uh, you know, put all of that on paper so that as you go through your day, you can, uh, you know, catch back up on that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So how can you set up an environment for you to start doing physical activities, especially if somebody's brand new to this and hasn't or hasn't done um, exercise or movement in a while because of the pandemic? Yeah, so my uh, biggest trigger in this field is uh, actually Laura, Laura Putman's book. Yay! Um, which, is, which is our great um, um, uh, reading at our course that we are attending together because uh, Laura in her book is talking about um, how to build the culture of health and well-being and for this uh, she's giving cues and nudges in it and cues and nudges are environmental 
and um, cultural prompts that uh, we are getting. So for example, the environmental ones are the signages or the equipment um, that you have around yourself. Um, and the other one, um, the cues are the rituals and the recognition um, that fall into this category. And um, Laura in her book is talking about how you can apply these at, at the workplace, but um, you can easily transform this strategy at your home as well. So just yeah. think, think of very simple things. Think of your environment in a very different way and think of your home as a place of opportunities. So for example, if you have the chance uh, to use the stairs instead of the elevators, you can do it at home. Or if you have stairs at home, you can climb them uh, well, consciously. So not just uh, for the sake of uh, getting getting higher in the building, or um, you can uh, free up space. So just move the furniture and do some um, exercises, or just um, um, look around and, and see where, where the sun rays are coming in, in your flat or in your house, and that what part of the day. So maybe at that time you can stop there and just stand for minutes and, and do some mindful mindfulness exercises. Um, so so it's not just about um, um, physical and mental well-being. It's not just about all the time running and rushing. It's about stopping um, some time just to uh, recap with ourselves. Um, the other thing that came into my mind, just based on uh, Laura's book, is that, uh, and, and I'm going to try it actually, is that uh, what if we put different signages around the, our house? So, yeah. very, for example, when I go for toothbrushing or I open the fridge, what if I do some, <clears throat> what if I do some jumping jacks, for example, at ten before opening the fridge, <laughs> and uh, um, and trying to eat uh, something. Um, um, yeah, so, so signages around your house um, might help you to stay fit. And actually, if you set it up in a conscious space, in a weekly manner, uh, and you track it, sooner or later you will realize um, that you are actually progressing because you can measure it. Because the next week you might be able to do um, 20 of the jumping jacks, and after a month's time, you just realize how, how so, super fit and, and healthy you are. So actually, I'm going to try it. Um, hope Yay! That watching this, we'll do the same. <laughs> That's exciting. I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear how that works out for you. That'll be really cool. That'll be really cool. So I want to thank you both for being here. And I just wanted to ask you um, if, if either of you have anything else you would like to share before I let you get back to doing all the amazing things you do. Yeah, I have much more uh, to tell you, but uh, yeah, our time is uh, limited. Just one, actually yeah. two things uh, referring back to Helga. The, the first is a system check. If you are out of energy or you are not motivated, and even if you are in a, in a race, in a, in a triathlon race as, as me before, if I'm in trouble, I always start uh, to, to check myself uh, from to the top. And that is everything all, all right. And when I'm doing this, it, it just triggers me to a, a higher level of, uh, of focus. And I'm just, uh, uh, after one minute, I just realized that all my problems are gone. Yeah. I, I have my head, I have my long and, and deep breath and, and so on. And uh, it's, it's very, very interesting then when Helga said that, the best thoughts uh, came out when, when she's running. And uh, I feel the same when I'm swimming. Uh, when nice. I'm swimming, uh, I'm always uh, the best thoughts and uh, sentences to my, to my book uh, has always come up because swimming is, uh, and water is a, is a very different uh, yeah. um, place and, and planet. We can, we can say you are very alone, even, the, even if the pool is, is full of with, uh, with swimmers, you, you, can't hear my, you can't hear much, much things, so you can turn uh, inside. And just when feeling the water and, and running all the length, it just trigger you to, to, yeah, just, just to find out some, some new thoughts. It's, it's very, very interesting. And uh, 
I really like it. That's great. That's great. That's exciting. And thank you for, for sharing that. And Helga, did you have any last thoughts that you wanted to share with everybody? Um, actually, one sentence came into my mind. So what we talked, we talked about a lot of things, but what is very important is to progress step by step. So maybe with a final um, sentence, I would say that try to think of what is possible and you soon realize that you are doing the impossible. So this way you can really stay fit and healthy in body and mind. Yeah, and be well, because this is our saying. Yeah. <laughs> and the well-being uh, group. So that's what I wish for everybody to take care and be well. That's fantastic. And I'm going to make sure that we have both of your bios as well as all of your social media links in the description below. Uh, but if you could share your website um, and maybe some of your social media handles um, verbally right now, that would be great as well. Yeah, so, so our initiative, the Health is Best, it's a long title, Health is Best, Wellbeing at Work and Beyond. Um, so we have a, a LinkedIn uh, page available and uh, it has the same title. So I would say that this is where you can find us and we would be happy if you could follow our page. Excellent. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you both. Thank both of you. So uh, Helga and Johnny, thank you so much for being here with me today and helping people to, to get an idea of where to begin with wellness or how to, to change that mindset with, um, you know, exercise and movement and really taking things step by step, but finding things that you love and enjoy. So I really appreciate that. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you both uh, again in the future. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. You're so welcome. Bye. Oh, well, may the force be with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>